Good afternoon. Five years ago, almost exactly on this very date, um, I found myself in this very room, invited by the very same Finnish Literature Society whose symposium we are celebrating these two days. Back in 2016, I briefly presented the beginning of the very same doctoral project that now is almost completed, and whose title is Polska Travels. Already then, I had used terms such as outsider and tradition, positioning myself as one lucky foreigner who had been invited and welcomed to study the Nordic folk traditions. My research was, um, uses the study and the history and the development um, of the Polska as basis for new arrangements and compositions. So that five years have passed, many things have happened, much music has been studied, created and performed. Four concerts and one recording have been realized. A written thesis has almost been completed. My researcher's perspective towards the traditions that I investigated has moved, shifted, transformed, adjusted, and ultimately embraced its state of constant flow. One question that I still get asked very often, I have to say, um, both in my mother country, which is Italy, and here at Northern Latitudes, is how come an Italian Indian with a classical Baroque background like me insists every time in coming back to Finland and uh, persists in wanting to study Nordic folk music traditions? To this question, I would normally only reply with uh, a silent and perhaps puzzling smile, while inside of me a voice repeats the true answer, which is, the world is too full of beauty not to tell everybody about it. For me, Nordic folk traditions possess a special kind of beauty, which is maybe not perhaps immediately evident but if you give that time, as an English friend of mine once told me after living several years in Finland, if you give that time, it gently creeps under your skin and stays with you. With my work as artistic researcher in Finland, Sweden and Norway, like a foreign guest in the old yet thriving house of folk music, let's say, I hope to have expressed my deep attraction for that beauty. And to the point of our topic today, to have taken it with me outside in my ramblings across familiar and unfamiliar territories. Alpha and Omega, that day five years ago and today, these days encircle a process where my creative approach to folk music followed a gradient from the mimetic to the metaphoric, from quotation to metamorphosis, from arrangement to original compositions. I would now like to play a short video for you with um, some meaningful excerpts from my first doctoral concert um, from January 2017, based on Finnish melodies, and from my last doctoral concert, uh, performed in May 2021, and inspired by the Norwegian repertoire for the Hardanger film.
During my years in the Nordic countries, I've been lucky enough to witness and sometimes participate to several forms of, of folk music making, from sessions in pubs, festivals, or private houses, to concert hall performances, to free form spontaneous expressions of the folk out in the nature, or to reconstructions of the past with costumes reenacted in traditional settings. I also saw how folk music is taught inside and outside institutions in public workshops, private lessons, or folk music departments like my own. No matter how active my participation was in those situations though, and no matter how close or distant I was to the folk music scene, a sense of admiration, uh, and I have to admit that to myself, of slight jealousy, always, always, always uh, seized me every time. I felt like a guest invited to a party and yes, allowed to take part in the fun. But I sensed a difference between myself and the people dancing on the floor at the rhythm of Polska, of the wars, of, of a Sotisi, and so on. And that difference was the sense of belonging. I, with my mixed family upbringing and the complete absence of traditional music values in my education, I was beholding the warmth of a cultural bond that seemed to connect the people, young and old, who felt that they were part of a unity. I could smile, I could cheer, dance, I could play with them, I could study their traditions and put on the costumes, and yes, I've done that as well. But I could not change my past and pretend that most of my story had not unfolded far and away from the soothing embrace of a shared tradition. I was witnessing something very alive and very, very special, at least for me. Something that asked me where I wanted to stand, inside or outside the circle. If I stepped inside the circle, where would my past and present individuality go? How deeply was I touched and how far was I willing to go in order to consider myself integrated in that tradition? But did I actually want to be integrated at all? I think that people um, that come from outside a musical tradition have a variety of approaches to choose from. They can decide to, for example, become tradition bearers themselves, which is a challenging uh, and very long process, probably. But it's definitely possible. I'm thinking, for example, about my first Hadi Fere mentor, uh, Daniel Sandien Warg, uh, who is Swedish and yet managed to establish himself as one of the most reputed and influential masters in Norway. And um, just to quote the words of another Hanagafid legend, uh, Norwegian Knut Hamre, tradition bearers eventually come to be nothing in the sense that they lose themselves to the collective knowledge as soon as that knowledge starts living through them. In my opinion and in my view, uh, a tradition bearer is in a way something like a musical indigenous. But at the opposite side of the spectrum, other outsiders might decide to be curious folklorists and just visit the traditions. Maybe shoot beautiful pictures, eat traditional music meals, so to speak, and then continue with their own musical tourism. This, in my experience, is largely the approach of most classically trained musicians uh, regarding folk music, which, in my very personal opinion, has nothing wrong, inherently wrong with it. However, that was not my choice. That was not the right thing for me to do, and I discovered that besides musical indigenous and musical tourist, though, there is another perspective one that is constantly stepping in and out of the circle, negotiating the urge to know what's inside with a growing feeling of belonging somewhere else, if anywhere at all. It's the position of a researcher who tries to study and digest the tradition, but then walks a further crucial step. Not simply out, but beyond the circle. The creative researchers take what they saw and internalized into other territories, driven by an urge both to deepen and to develop the knowledge, acting as connectors with the outside of the circle. 
this was my position and the awareness that I had chosen this position gradually increased from being unconscious to being very intentional, almost deliberate sometimes. Uh, and consolidating a perception of myself as some sort of musical explorer. Not satisfied with being a musical tourist, but on the other hand, unwilling to commit to the task of becoming a musical indigenous. A tradition bearer feels home in the tradition. A tourist only pays a visit and then goes back home. I myself have no musical home to feel comfortable in or to go back to. And perhaps my lifetime journey is to embrace this nomadic condition and to see what it can bring. Throughout the journey of my research, I've tried to put the folk traditions in contact with other elements and vice versa. But I've recently realized that the biggest otherness that I was putting the folk in contact with was myself, my whole self and the whole self of an outsider. And I wonder whether this is perhaps also true sometimes when folk fiddlers put their whole uh, individuality in contact with their own traditions, because maybe one can be a stranger even in one's own home. Maybe there was not such a huge divide between myself and those people on the dance floor after all. We are here discussing, reflecting and debating what tradition is and what traditional means, but I think this, that tradition is a very elusive term that, like all categories, implies dichotomies. Um, for example, individual versus collective, insider and outsider, preservation, innovation, authenticity, corruption, integrity, contamination. Definitions for me are like maps. Uh, they are very useful models of reality, not to be confused with reality itself. The personal, the personal positioning in relation to those dichotomies, I think, is every folk musician's responsibility, especially in our globalized and tech-dominated society. But myself, where is my position? Where do I position myself now? In other words, where am I? In the Nordic traditions, I have found pieces of a broader fragmented home. I chose the path to take them with me as I travel towards that home. They become, in a sense, that is very difficult to verbalize, parts of my own personal tradition. To quote, by the way, a folk musician friend with whom I recently had a conversation around these topics, I might be bold enough to say that I am my own tradition bearer and that embracing my otherness in respect to the Nordic traditions is the necessary foundation for a fruitful dialogue with them. We might ask ourselves, is being the bearer of my own personal tradition, which is actually a delightfully contradictory expression if you think about it, is this an easy way to escape the friction between the inside and the outside? Can we excuse any use of the traditions under the flag of individuality? Where is the line between authentic and foreign, or between the inside and the, in, uh, and the outside? What qualifies as pure? This, I think, is a type of questions that um, has no definite answer, but is nevertheless fundamental to guide our journey through the flow of life. Shaking off the dust of our certainties and demanding our courage to explore more. I often ask myself, are my musical creations respectful of the folk? And who is the folk, anyway? Was my knowledge of the traditions deep enough to use them as basis for my compositions? Was I legitimized as an outsider to tap into Nordic folk and transform it my own way? All of this, I argue, is not entirely for me to answer. I might, as go, I might go as far as saying that it is not possible or even relevant to have a final say about it. What I can do, however, is to take this five-year cycle as a lesson in life. One that has taught me through the power of folk music, ancestral and actual at the same time, to embrace my otherness and transfer the joy and safety of belonging to a tradition that I saw in people here to that of being my own itinerant, vagabond, and personal tradition. Today, 
Just like five years ago, I stand in front of you at the crossroads of many streets. To those who ask me, where will you go next? I answer with the same silent and perhaps puzzling smile. As I repeat to myself that, yes, the world is full of beauty. And it's too full of beauty not to tell everybody about it. And move on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Krishna, for sharing your musical journey. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Okay, and now we have good time to ask or com make comments. So please come. I'm happy to hear your comments or answer your question if I know the answer. There's also the zoo. Oh, that's a chat. <laughs> Wonderful presentation. Thank you. Oh, no, <laughs> yes, thanks. Interesting conference. Löytyykö täältä kysymyksiä ja kommentteja? Vai oliko kaikilla mielessä tämä kysymys, mikä hän itse antoi ja vastasi? Mulla oli ainakin. Just the question. Said, what next? Oh, I had an other question also. Are you going to bring this music also to Italy? I've tried. <laughs> well, you mean my doctoral compositions? Yes. Well, indirectly, yes. My last doctoral mm -hmm. outcome is a CD. That it's just waiting to be published. Actually, I'm, I'm looking for a label at the moment. So, if that happens, definitely, this will be shared with uh, hopefully the whole world. I don't know. Um, these, it's quite difficult to bring anything of the sort to Italy. Because, uh, believe it or not, Nordic folk music is widely unknown outside <laughs> in the rest of the European countries, especially in, in, in Southern Europe. But there is a lot of interest, so I might take your, your, your question as a suggestion. I should probably be more proactive in that. I have tried to bring um, my arrangements, rather, to um, Italy and other countries in Europe through my own group. I have a group called Bru. And we play a lot of my arrangements of folk music, and uh, they have generally been extremely well received, not because we are good or my arrangements are good, but because everybody goes, wow, wow what's this? What's a Polska? What's a Springa? How, how comes it sounds so different from, I don't know, you know the, the commonplace, commonplace in, pop, in um, um, folk music, like Irish music, Scottish music, which are probably a, a bit better known. They all go, wow, this is so unprecedented. So I'm happy to be the connection between these musical worlds and, and my own uh, background. Here is a question. I'm interested to know whether you think personally not having a tradition gives you opportunities opposite to those described by the Exactly, th th this is the point. Um, I think so. I don't really know how to do it. I mean, this is why I'm spending five years of my life doing a doctoral project about it in the end. Um, the funny thing is that this precise point, like, um, yeah, exactly, like opposite of what Ruth Hamlet says about uh, or and things, so to be nothing. I'm trying to become something more of myself through the same channel, though. This is, this is very funny, and this shows clearly how different I think we are. Um, as I said, it was um, rather um, unaware at the beginning. Now I'm trying to look at who I am and the fact that I do not feel um, uh, as a belonger, but like a, a bearer or even a, somebody who belongs to any geographical or uh, cultural homogeneity. So yes. Um, I think I have the opportunity to become something as opposed to not become anything or become nothing. I don't know if it makes sense at all, but I'm, dis I'm discovering this path, uh, through, um, especially through the last year or a couple of years of my, of my research. Um, I've actually never really talked to Knut. I know very well uh, his pupil, who also wrote the book from where I took the quote, uh, Benedict Mauset. She is a good friend and uh, 
a good source of inspiration, and we talked a lot about this. Uh, but uh, I've never talked to Knuth about it. I just finished reading the book, so I would actually love to, to speak about these things. I hope this very confused answer made deep in some. Yeah. Christian. Hey, thank you, Krishna, for fantastic uh, talk. Uh, this will go, by the way, directly to your thesis. Uh, <laughs> That's so what I wrote it. <laughs> good that you wrote it now. <laughs> because no excuse. I was going to ask, uh, ask you to write about it, actually, and you had it beautifully here. Uh, I was really intrigued by this uh, term of yours, uh, this fragmented home. I think oh. it is a beautiful idea. And I totally understand your uh, point of view, how you feel as an outsider, and uh, you have come up with this term, but actually, I think we, we, we might all be in that stage, uh, one way or another, because I don't think the world is so simple anymore. So uh, maybe if we scratch the surface of the folk musician, whom you see as a kind of a tradition bearer and belonging, they might not feel that themselves so strongly. I mean, we are all in a very complex place in this global world, like feeling this kind of pulling and pushing from many directions. So it's, it's really a complex world. For, I mean, I'm a Finnish folk musician, but, but I'm also many other things. Yeah. So it's not easy to belong and it's not easy to find home. So I f find your idea of fragmented home kind of comforting also uh, that uh, maybe home and belonging uh, is, uh, like you said, it's, it's maybe that we have to rearrange our thoughts of what it is actually. Absolutely. Uh, I am rearranging my thoughts about that every single day of my life. Of course, it's um, uh, in a way easier or more um, straightforward if you know you grow up in a certain... For example, let's talk about musical traditions. If you um, grow in a musical family or you're exposed to something that you really like and you can relate to. But then, isn't the whole of life a constant negotiation between inside and outside? This hence the title of my, of my uh, presentation today. So. It's very symbolic what you said, uh, and maybe music is such a powerful tool to um, flesh out these, these concepts and to um, let them emerge in our lives. Um, one, one concept and one phenomenon that has really, really struck me always um, was the fact that the lines of tradition, um, whatever these thing mean, this expression might mean, generally now they're kind of broken. So there's mm, sometimes very, very thin continuity between the rural past or whatever people 100 years ago used to consider folk or as musicals or traditional music. And on the interchangeability of these terms, we, we might actually start another symposium, <laughs> but yeah, let's take that for granted. So uh, when these things are on breaks, what do you do? So are my friends and colleagues in the folk music department equally strangers or are they more at home? Everybody has to answer for their own. This is why I, I, I said we definitely live in a globalized and tech-dominated society and type of world, which is a great thing in my opinion, but also challenging because it kind of scatters all of our once unified selves in many, many directions. Fragmented home, it just, it's an inspection that it just came out of me almost automatically. Uh, I see that beauty this is a very romanticized vision of life. You know, maybe I see that also beauty is kind of scattered, like you know, the fragments of a mirror all, all over the place. And you, uh, you meet a person, you hear a, a type of music, you, any aesthetic experience can be redirected to this initial homeless, or maybe not initial, but idealized home, um, wholeness. Of, of our um, longing for something that's peaceful and beautiful and good for us. Then, of course, it depends how your approach to life is. I personally think that that's maybe 
a bit of an ideal, so it's not attainable, uh, in, at least in one life. <laughs> Maybe my Indian heritage kicks in at this moment. But nevertheless, I think, yes, just to, just to wrap it up, um, the question is whether I am fragmenting my home even more sometimes. <laughs> Uh, and if so, to what extent? But thank you for uh, relating on, on the same wavelength. <laughs> We're all in the same boat. <laughs> okay, thank you have to go on. And thank yes. you all very thank much. Thank you very much for listening. Keep on exploring, like yes. my work does. Yes, actually, my work was the, the, the person behind the expression of personal tradition, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.